All right, mathematical computing, here it is. This is what we're going to be working toward this week. What you can see in this document is I've taken a Numbrex puzzle that I obtained on Parade Magazine's website, and I've input it into sheet one of my Excel document. Now I'm giving away a little bit of the game here, but as you can see, there are many other sheets in this Excel document, each one of them sort of filtering and gathering information about the puzzle on this sheet for me. And then what I've done is I've applied a filter, which we'll go over in a forthcoming video, to the cells defined in my Numbrex puzzle. And what that filter is doing is highlighting cells of interest for me. Now what I've had to teach this Excel document and these other tabs is what do I mean by cell of interest? So if you'll recall, what I mean is I'm looking at a cell that is kind of in a final state of where it ought to be in a puzzle. It's a cell that has values. You know, this cell in particular, for example, has three adjacent cells, this one, this one, and this one. And any cell in a Numbrex puzzle needs to have an identifiable cell that leads into it and a cell that leads out of it. And so what I've highlighted in green in this puzzle are cells that are in this last case scenario. There's only one more available adjacent cell and these cells that I've highlighted lack a clear in cell or out cell. And so Excel is highlighting them for me to let me know that those cells deserve my attention. So for example, if I come up here to the three, I realize that a two is missing and I can fill that in right here. On the 18, I've got a 17 missing. On the 19, I need a 20 and so on. So let me just fill these in real quick for you. Now I wanna pause for a minute to point out something that just happened. If you'll see, let me delete the 47 from right here. The 46 is highlighted. When I put in the 47, that's going to solve the problem for cell number 46. It now has an identifiable in cell and out cell. And so the cell that was previously highlighted, 46, is no longer highlighted. However, in placing a 47 in this cell, I've created that situation for the cell 54, which was previously not highlighted. So before I have that 47 filled in, the 54 isn't forced because there are two options for the cell that could have led into the 54. But as soon as I go and I put this 47 right here, the 54 becomes highlighted as a new cell that deserves my attention. So let's just continue filling, filling in for a moment. And let's now repeat this process. We now have a new collection of green cells that are highlighted and we need to fill in the forced values. And here we are on the last one. So as you noticed, we made our way entirely around the puzzle and we're 100% able to fill it in just with that filter alone. So it's gonna be a good filter for us. It's really gonna help us as we attempt to create hints for solving Numbrex puzzles.